Hey there, my name is Cameron, also known as Venus Theory, and welcome back to the Ilio YouTube channel. Today, we're going to be taking a look at Fold from Delta Sound Labs, which is a multi-mode distortion unit designed to twist, mangle, and, well, fold your sound into some pretty cool distorted tones. Fold is available right now, so if you want to check it out for yourself and follow along as we go, you can find more information with the link down in the description. To get the party started here today, before we break down all of the features and functions of Fold, I think we should listen to it in action to hear what it can do for your tracks and for your mixes. So I've prepared a quick build up and a drop and I've used Fold in a couple of different ways. So let's take a listen to this before Fold is applied and then after. And that is the power of Fold. I think the nice thing about this plugin is it functions both as more of a subtle mix utility and it can also be more of a powerful creative tool to totally reshape a sound. Let's break down a few of the ideas I've used Fold for here in the mix that you can go steal and try out in your own tracks. First and foremost, I've used Fold here to pretty much entirely change the character of this bass line. So I created a pretty standard mid-tempo bass and it's really not anything too crazy. But it's really just not that interesting to listen to. And after bringing in Fold, I've used some drive, wave folding, a little bit of filtering, and then blended it in in parallel with the effects knob over here to totally change this and turn it into this. So it's just a much more upfront and aggressive bass. As well, in the beginning of the track here, I've also used just some basic automation with the parameters of Fold to do a bit of a filter sweeping movement as well as bring in the distortion and drive with the local mix controls down here. To add even more bounce and groove, I've also brought in the LFOs, which is pretty fun. So I've used these with different timings just to add some movement and bounce to the bass line. So it has this kind of fluttering character that evolves and changes. So it's not just one static effect the entire time. To add some weight to the track, I've also used Fold in a bit more of a subtle way on the sub bass line here. Before Fold is brought in, the sub sounds fine. But in the context of the mix, it doesn't really stand out. Because we're dealing with some very low fundamental type frequencies. So if we bring in Fold here, and we could see as we start to increase this, we'll get more harmonics. And this is one of the useful ideas with Fold is having the oscilloscope as well as the spectrum analyzer together so I can know how many harmonics I'm starting to add when I start driving things up. So now we're almost getting more of like a mid-range bass, but backing it off, we can get just a subtle bit of heat to the bass, which really makes it stand up in the mix. To make the bass line really start to jump out, I used Fold to absolutely shred the mid-bass layer, and before Fold is applied, it sounds like this. Not really anything too interesting, but once you bring Fold in, just a super aggressive and upfront bass sound that layers really nicely with the sub. Mm -hmm. 
Within Fold, I've used the drive and fold controls here to just shred the baseline to a million pieces and then brought in the LFOs with tempo sync just to make them bounce and groove a little bit along with the baseline and the drums. Then I've used the filters to add some high pass filtering just to get rid of that low end because I've already got a sub bass and we have another baseline to layer with this. And then use the low pass just to shave off some of that hiss and air because I want to save that for some of my drums and other elements. Speaking of the drums here, I've used Fold in two different ways to start enhancing the drums. First up on the kick drum here, I brought in a Fold and used the envelope follower just to add a bit of heat and grit to the transient of the kick drum. If we listen to the kick drum by itself, it sounds like this. Which is cool, but I felt like it could really be a bit more aggressive because this is kind of a stomping big mid-tempo track. If we bring in the Fold here, it sounds like this. So it just adds a bit of weight and knock to those initial maybe 30 or 40 milliseconds. Within Fold, I used just a tiny bit of soft clipping and then high passed it to taste just to get rid of the explosive low end that would happen if we didn't filter it out at all. So that just feels like way too much. Bringing it up just a tiny bit retains that subby information, but it enhances that knock and kind of lower mid frequency that really is important to make a kick start kind of pounding and smashing your head out of the speakers. On the full drum bus here, I brought in another instance of Fold with a bit more of an aggressive soft clipper and a little bit of filtering and blended it in very, very subtly in parallel just to make the drums kind of jump out of the speakers and feel a bit more exciting and alive. Before this Fold is applied, the drum mix sounds like this. And once we bring this Fold in, it sounds more like this. So it really just hypes up that high end. It gets rid of some of the unnecessary subby stuff because we're gonna fill that in with our sub bass later. And it just makes the drums feel a bit more exciting and full. In the context of the mix, before the fold is applied, the drums sound like this. Which is fine, but I feel like bringing in this fold really helps the cymbals and stuff especially stand out. It makes the snare and the clap a bit more aggressive and it just cleans up the kick a tiny bit. So it just makes the drums feel a little bit more tight and controlled. Closing things off, I used Fold on the master bus here, which might seem a little bit crazy and shocking, but it actually works pretty well. All I've done here is use Fold with just a tiny hint of soft clipping to make the track a bit more exciting and full sounding. Using a soft clipper on your master is a great way just to add a bit of aggression and heat and make the whole track stand up without totally just crushing the dynamic range with a compressor or a limiter. Before the Fold is applied on the master, it sounds like this. And once we bring it in, the track sounds like this. Just a little bit louder and more exciting and just makes the track feel a bit more finalized. That's how I've used Fold here in this track, and this is really just a handful of the ways you can use Fold in your own productions, but feel free to take some of these ideas and try them out and see what you think. With all that out of the way, let's put on our adventurer hats here and take a deeper look under the hood of Fold at each of the parameters and what they do. Fold has a fast and easy to understand interface with everything just laid out here on one panel. There's not any sub menus or anything else to dive through, which is always nice to see. At the top here to the left, we have the oscilloscope and over to the right, we have the spectrum analyzer. These are really useful because they just help you visualize and understand what Fold is doing to your audio. One thing to know about these as well is that they are routed actually past the entire effects chain, including the effects or parallel blend knob here. So this is nice because no matter how you've got Fold applied or how you've got the local mix or even the master mix knobs applied, this means Fold is still going to give you an accurate visual representation of what is happening to the signal coming into Fold. The main control panel down here houses each of the individual effect units within Fold. The Drive, Fold, Crush, and Low Pass modules also feature a toggle above them that you can click to enable or bypass that effect, and local mix sliders down here that allow you to just blend in that individual effect in parallel. So the related local mix slider is to the right of the LFO of that specific effect module. Starting things off, we have the High Pass filter to the left-hand side. Fold features analog style filters, which can be great for creating sweeping 
using filter effects in your mix if you want to do something like that using automation or using the built-in LFOs down here, but we'll talk about those more later on. The knob here controls the filter cutoff, while the slider below that controls the filter resonance. Moving on here, we have the drive module. This adds a soft or hard clipping overdrive to your signal. We can increase the drive amount with the drive knob here, and we use the slider below to go to soft clipping mode over to the left or over to hard clipping mode to the right. Next up, we have the fold module, which is a wave folding distortion. Just like the drive and high pass modules, the knob here will control the amount of wave folding distortion applied. There's a link icon here between the drive and fold controls, so if you want to link these controls together, you can click that and then move the controls and they will move equally related to whatever knob you're moving. So if I move fold, drive moves. If I move drive, fold moves, and I think you get the idea. Next up, we have the crush module here. This applies a bit crushing style distortion effect. The bit depth and sample rate are actually tied together within this single knob, but they're scaled together in a specific way to allow the crush module to function better as a quantizing distortion and not more like a traditional bit crushing effect. Finally, over here, we have the low pass filter, which is another analog style filter. Just like the high pass filter, the knob here controls the cutoff and the slider below that controls the resonance of the filter. Another thing to know about fold here is that all of these effects are routed in series. So the signal flow goes from the left out through to the right. Over to the far right of fold here, you'll see the effect knob, which is actually the dry and wet blend knob for fold. So you can use this to blend the signal in in parallel to retain a little bit of the original signal. This can also be really handy for automation in your DAW if you want to back off of the distortion effect periodically or maybe modulate this over time within your track. Below the effect knob here, we have the envelope toggle. And if we click this, this enables the envelope follower, which applies fold based on the incoming peak amplitude of the signal. And this bypasses the blend knob here. So this essentially does a dry wet mix for you based on the amplitude of the incoming signal. This feature can be especially useful for short percussive sounds like drums or arps or little plucky bits where you just want to add a little bit of heat and bite to that initial transient and then back off as the sound goes on over time. Moving down to the bottom here, each module of fold has a dedicated multi mode LFO. To enable the LFO for that module, you can just click the LFO tag here, and then we could bring in the amount using the slider below the rate knob. The rate knob here sets the LFO speed. Over to the left, we could set the LFO type between sine, square, and ramp. And then we have the sync mode here. So if you want to tempo sync this, you can just click that. And then we get musical values to sync the LFO to. At the top of the interface here, we can go through the factory presets using the preset menu here, or we can scroll through using the browser arrows to quickly flick through presets and see which one might best suit our sound. If you want to load or save presets, you can use the load and save icons next to the preset browser. Here. To the right of the browser window, you'll see the oversampling factor control here, which is pretty important to know about. This allows you to toggle the amount of oversampling within Fold from 1 times to up to 16 times. This is important to know about because it can have a pretty significant impact on the final sound, especially with modes like Fold or Crush being applied. With that in mind, be sure to try out the different oversampling options to see which one works best with the sound you're applying Fold to, but do remember as well that increased oversampling does lead to increased CPU usage. Finally, to cap things off, we have the master volume slider here. This is useful just to compensate for Fold because adding distortion does make things louder, so this is useful just to gain stage things and make sure that it's going to sit right in your mix after you've applied Fold to the signal. Finally, here we have the stereo spread control, which allows you to control the amount of stereo information passing through Fold. If we have it all the way to the center here, this is entirely mono, and if we spread it all the way out, this is actually doubling the amount of stereo information. One important note here, though, is that this only applies if there's a stereo signal feeding into Fold, so Fold can't be used to add stereo information to a mono signal. And that is a look at Fold from Delta Sound Labs and all of its controls and ins and outs. If you want to check out Fold for yourself, you can do so with the link down in the description below because Fold is available right now. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, I hope you learned something, and as always, I hope this inspires you to get out there and make something awesome. For more tutorials just like this one and all of the latest updates from Ilio, don't forget to subscribe to the channel down below.